M42, Dilorion Nebula. One of the most famous and most often photographed nebulas in the night sky. With about 35,000 pictures on Instagram. Although not all pictures are of the Orion Nebula. And more than 8,000 pictures on Astrobin. And even a dress made out of it. The Orion Nebula is the most popular object in the night sky. Throughout the years I have become better at capturing this object with my telescope. However, I still have one major problem. The core of my Orion Nebula is missing. The cool thing about the Orion Nebula is that it's a very active star forming region. And you have also a lot of stars in different stages of that process. Hubble has been able to take a lot of amazing photos where you can see the different stages of the star formation process. There's this photo in particular where you have four stars in the center which are illuminating all this dust that is around it, which almost makes it like a little bowl that you're looking into. And the other cool thing about it is because you have these stars in the center, in the front of it, you can see stars with disks around it. So you can see the silhouettes of stars with young disks around them. So then you have the already forming stars and stars that are in the process of becoming solar systems. So Orion is a very exciting, very active place to study star formation. So hi folks, so welcome back to the Astroform channel and thanks for tuning in. Uh, in this particular video, we're going to try and capture as many details in the core of the Orion Nebula as possible. You just heard Katharina Eubach explain very beautifully how important this region actually is. So um, in the core of the Orion Nebula, a lot of new stars are born and new star systems are being formed. And uh, over the past five years, I have been trying to capture this incredibly beautiful nebula using this refractor telescope. So this is an apochromatic telescope with a focal length of 480 millimeters. And this is actually already enough to capture the Orion Nebula because the Orion Nebula is quite a large target in the night sky. But in order to also catch the details that are in the core of the Orion Nebula, so new stars that are being born and star systems that are being formed, we are going to need a telescope that has a larger or a longer focal length. So let me catch that telescope. Uh, here we go. So in this video we are going to be using the Celestron Edge HD 8 inch. So this telescope has an aperture of 8 inch and a focal length of 2000 millimeters and I'm really hoping that uh, this focal length of 2000 millimeters is actually enough to catch some incredible details in the core of the Orion Nebula, some newborn stars and star systems. So this is what this video is all about and uh, yeah let's also take a listen to another scientist, Will Fisher, who responds to a question from the audience uh, in which he explains how incredibly important the core of the Orion Nebula actually is. Alright, so how do the trapezium stars at the core of Orion relate to what you're talking about today? Well, those are the most massive stars in Orion and those are part of what makes it such an interesting star forming region. That's the closest star forming region where you have stars that massive. And the winds, the outflows, energetic outflows from these stars tend to shape the entire dynamics and evolution of the immediate Orion Nebula region.
So folks, this might not have been the best idea. It's beginning to rain right now. And look at that. Beautiful rainbow. I have to take my gear back inside. So I basically accepted that this day would not be the day that I would shoot the core of the Orion Nebula. I took some more videos of the rainbow and the clouds, but then something remarkable happened. So hi guys, I quickly <laughs> whoa, rebuilt my rig over here and of course when you do such a thing you can see that new clouds are rolling in. So I'm just hoping that, uh, I'm just hoping I can get uh, one hour of clear skies or semi-clear skies to capture the core of Orion. Let's hope for the best. So hi guys, I'm cutting it close because you can see over here there are some clouds uh, rolling in. I am currently guiding on a star as you can see over here. But uh, let's go outside so I can show you. So my mount is over here. Um, it is currently guiding on Orion, but when we look at Orion over there, uh, you can see these uh, twinkling stars. That's Orion. On the top left, you have Betelgeuse. But in front, uh, you have this big, big tree. So I'm really hoping that Orion will clear the tree. Uh, before the clouds roll in so I can take some short exposures of the core of the Orion Nebula. So fingers crossed. So hi guys, I'm really excited because I just finished setting everything up for the second time. So my mount is set up, my telescope and my camera is rolling, guy scope is uh, set up. So I'm ready to slew to the uh, core of the Orion Nebula. So here we go. Uh, let me show you. So this is uh, Sequence Generator Pro. Um, I'm telling uh, Sequence Generator Pro to slew to the core of the Orion Nebula and it will take a 10 second picture. It's already doing it. Oh, I'm hoping that I will see the core tonight. Yes! Oh, that's great. So you can see here the core of the Orion Nebula. This is still an overexposed at 10 seconds. So hi guys, I was a little overexcited just now and I forgot that I am stretching my pictures in Sequence Generator Pro. So let me just quickly show you what I mean. I'm currently taking about 5 second exposures of the Orion Nebula as you can see here, 5 seconds. And I'm not stretching my pictures in any way, so let me zoom out a little bit. So you can see at about 5 seconds I'm still able to catch the 4 separate stars within the core of the Orion Nebula. So if you have a regular DSLR camera or a dedicated astrophotography camera, about 5 seconds is enough uh, to capture the trapezium, the 4 stars within the core. 